Happy Halloween and Happy Samhain to everyone who celebrates Samhain. I planned out originally to have four videos come out each week in October. However, when you work retail and you're kind of one of the people in charge of a department, all your time kind of gets sucked up in doing things for the holidays because every retail place is starting to celebrate Christmas in October. So it's just been really, really chaotic. But I wanted to make sure I got these four videos done and out for you guys. So post two videos today and two videos tomorrow um, so that all the four Halloween content comes up because you guys deserve it. You guys do a lot for me and I really want to make sure that you get the content that you deserve and that I promise to have out for you. And again, I apologize, life. So for this video, I will be talking about my 13 favorite horror movies. It's th 13 because I think 13 is a good number for Halloween, you know unlucky number, but also because I kept adding to it. It started off as 10, and it was 11, and it was 12, and it was 13, and I'm just like, 13 is the cap off point. I would like to reiterate that it says favorite, not best, so if you're looking for certain movies that I know people always look for on the best horror movie film tallies and stuff like that, it's because it's not my favorite. They're very, very good. And I definitely think that you should watch them. And I will put them down below in the honorable mentions collection and also link to my Tumblr post where I go through a list of all the movies I would have put on this list if I had the utmost amount of space. However, this is the 13 favorite that I have chosen. Anyway, if you like it, thumbs up, share, subscribe. Love you guys, and here we go. Night of the Living Dead is probably one of the best zombie movies of all time. I think it does this great balance between knowing how to be one a good horror movie and also a good character drama because I think a lot of the times what people forget is that you need to like people in horror movies so that you want them to live and you feel bad when they die and I think that you know Night Living Dead did that really well and I think it also is just one of the best zombie movies because it invented the zombie genre as we know today you know so many things could not be what they are without this movie the uh, concepts of like you know the one hit kill shot in the head the idea of you know zombies being um if you bite them if they bite you <laughs> um you turn into a zombie this kind of started that whole trend and I think that what also makes it so interesting is that you have all of these characters stuck in this place together trying to survive but being in conflict about the best way to do so. It's this very realistic, you know, kind of story genre that makes the, the, the narrative more interesting. You know, you have Barbara who's kind of like this really, you know, quiet ingenue and just kind of completely goes into herself after this traumatic event. Then you have Ben. And Ben's interesting because he is one of the first black horror heroes. Um, and honestly, he may be the only one, <laughs> um, if you think about it, of being an actual lead. It's just him. Yeah, it is just him, isn't it? Um, but he's, you know, very smart, very competent, and he's in charge, and he has to be in company with these other people. And he's not always right. You know, in the end, the idea of being in the basement is what he does to survive, even though he made everyone come upstairs. Um, so he's flawed, he's complicated, and I think the racial aspect is interesting in this movie because it, they don't call attention to it, you know, the guys who are arguing with him aren't arguing about him because he's black. I mean, you could infer that, but his color is never brought up directly in the narrative. The sort of racial punch to it is the ending where, you know, Ben survives zombies, you know, a complete, you know, swarm of zombies entering the house and, you know, killing everyone. He even survives, you know, the zombie girl at the end and he gets shot in the head by these white cops who are trying to kill all these zombies. They don't check to make sure that Ben's not a zombie. Just see someone walking in the distance, don't check to see if he's human or not, and just go, and he's dead. Despite having survived all this, and you see his body being dragged out with all the other zombie corpses, and it's just so, like, especially, like, watching it today, you just kind of, like, wow, that's really poignant. And it was not intentional. I think they just cast the actor because he was the best person for the role, and you get that, right? Just all the other, like, gore bits that you get because it's black and white so you don't have to worry about they're doing too much but like when they're eating the dead bodies that have been like cooked in like the explosion and just like kind of like gnawing it like it's barbecue like that's great and then when the little girl you know resurrected herself from when she rises up and she grabs the you know the shit what that thing you call that she used to kind of like 
dig with the plants and she like stabs her mom to death with it like these zombies they're smart and that's what also is kind of creepy like the first zombie you see is kind of like slowly like walking and he starts to run and you're just kind of like oh shit and um and then eventually when you um see them later some of them you know they have sense of self-preservation they walk away from the fire when they see it they don't just walk right into it they know how to use tools like these are smart creatures and that makes them all the more terrifying because you're just like what the fuck is gonna happen i first saw this movie in college and if something that i've added to my like horror you know calendar i watch it every halloween um it is just so amazing like a lot of horror anthologies are kind of like hit or miss for me i don't really like the vhs anthology series they're not really for me but i love this one because it it has all the little vignette stories that are great on their own but are even better because they're part of this larger larger story and they're all really connected like it's not just like arbitrary this and that third they're all in the same place at the same time happening and each event kind of bleeds into the next one and then of course you have the overarching character of sam the spirit of halloween um making sure that everyone's obeying the right laws and being a good person and you know people get saved based on the reverence that they have towards the holiday and not using it for malicious intentions it's just it's so good and i love sam because it's like he's not complete ma malevolent you know what i mean like he doesn't just kill willie nelly it's, if you do something wrong on halloween sam's gonna get you my favorite story in the anthology is definitely the bus school massacre revisited like Rhonda getting her come up it's about all those little assholes who try to trick her and her just going like I was like yes bitch because I just I was so happy to see those kids die which is terrible but it was also great because you know kids are often saved in horror movies but at this movie there's no express bait like these kids will get fucked up and I just feel like every piece of it is just really interesting and even the end when everything's kind of like you know coming together for the last time that's great and then the final final sequence like you guys have watched i'm not gonna spoil it for you because i think it's really great but that final like shot and ending credit scene just like perfect it is like one of the best horror movies about halloween ever since halloween i think it i would probably say like it's halloween and then trick-or-treat like this movie is great and if you haven't seen it i would recommend it and even the little short that comes out with it is great some horror movies are great because they have like gore and just make you feel cringy and disgusting the wicker man is an amazing horror movie because of the, the amazing atmosphere it builds into itself i mean you feel the tension the suspense the danger from the very moment you come into this freaky as fuck island and i think how's character you know his religious conflict and the religious conflict with with the um with the paganism in in the in the island is just so well manifested it because it could have easily been like him just being you know part of this like patriarchal outdated society but at the same time it's just kind of like no these people are fucking crazy and you know you have like the phallic imagery the dancing you know putting frogs in their mouth like all these kind of like archaic kind of traditions that aren't inherently evil um aren't inherently bad either but there is this kind of malevolence simmering under the surface with this kidnapping and the mystery of rowan is like one of my favorite things like even when i was watching it for the first time and i knew what happens to him i was still like wondering what the fuck is going on with this girl because i didn't exactly know that bit about it but it was just so well handled and i think that the acting is amazing i mean you have Christopher Lee in one of his great roles, and you have the actor who plays How, the people in the the um, the village. It just it just builds itself so beautifully, and I think that some movies on this list are are great, but not you know always the most visually entertaining things. But this movie is just it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous, it's beautifully cinematographed. It's just it is a piece of art as well as being a scary horror movie, and it's scary because of the tension. And then that that scene with him being brought into the wicker man and being lit aflame and him saying the Lord's Prayer as everyone's chanting and dancing. It's just, ah, uh, beautiful. You know, it's beautiful. It's it's dark, but it's beautiful. And I think especially the fact that you have these two religions in conflict and they both win and lose, you know. Um, Howie's religion saves his soul, but he still dies. And the pagans, you know, they get this wicker man, they're going to make the sacrifice. But will it work to, you know, raise their crops and have them have a bountiful harvest? Like, both win and both lose. It's just, it makes his death so inconsequential. 
you know, he he came here to do something, and they brought him here to do something, and they both may ultimately fail. And it's just, ugh, you gotta watch The Wicker Man. It's amazing. <laughs> Ginger Snaps is another movie I saw in college. College was a very good year for me in horror films. I love it because you have these two sisters, Bridget and Ginger, who are sort of, um, they're these like two kind of goth macabre girls who are very interested in like death, destruction, decay, because it's sort of like stilted, very sterile suburban world they kind of live in. They're trying to like find their own way in it. And this is how they manage to do it, by going to this extreme. And you have them wanting to do that. And then extreme comes and just kind of like, fucks up everything because they they go out trying to find the beast of bailey they think it's just this giant dog and it's a fucking werewolf and this werewolf is just like in most werewolf movies you know the silver all that kind of stuff it's very much there but in this movie the werewolf you know he sees he mauls ginger it's not like a bite she gets mauled like fucking annihilated and as she heals and, and transforms you just see this this darkness being brought inside of her and and causing this used division and it's both you know triggered by both her being out there but her also you know having her first period and being had to do that smell as well and it just it does a great job of being this metaphor for growth and 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 adolescence and coming into your own one of the best parts of this movie is ginger's world transformation i mean that shit is amazing. I think that after the Van Helsing werewolf, Ginger's werewolf form is my favorite version of like the werewolf design. It's so well done. It's so like it's like this hairless, sickly looking wolf. It just it's so disgusting and not at all what you like are used to seeing with werewolves. And for me, those kind of things and just the fact that there's no way to save Ginger. They kind of make you think that, but in the end, you realize like, like Bridget has to kill her. She's killing people. She's hurting people. She's gonna kill Ginger. And there's none of this whole like it only affects you on the full moon. Like they don't establish that. Like if once she turns into a werewolf, she's gonna be a werewolf for the rest of her life, twenty four seven, and that is terrifying. And it's not good like she's suffering and the thing about ginger, ginger doesn't even know she's suffering most of the time like she just feels like she's going on this adventure like she's having so much fun being this werewolf that she doesn't even know that she's destroying herself it's just it's a great film and i think that it is my favorite werewolf movie that and american werewolf in london which is not on this list but also a really good movie um so if you love werewolves you love great character drama check out ginger snaps <laughs> Everyone knows Psycho is great and I kind of thought about should I put it on this list should I not but then I remembered that the first time I watched Psycho I was blown away by it even though I knew about the shower scene even though I know about the twist with Norman Bates being the killer and his mother's you know ensemble I I still was so hooked on it every single scene because it is just a brilliant movie you know there are some movies that horror movies that are criticized for not being you know, well made or, you know, not well acted. You know, this and Wicker Man, the Wicker Man, are not two of those movies. You know, Psycho, the character of Norman Bates is just so well acted. Because he can be both seductive and terrifying and creepy within the same sequence. You know, when they shoot him with the taxidermy scenes in the background where he's talking to everybody, like, it's just, it's so well made. And then with the main character, the female character who gets killed, I never knew why she the fuck she was even in the shower, you know what I mean? Like, because you don't see that in the context. You just see that scene mostly, you know, being ripped or spoofed. And so seeing her, you know, why she was there, she had the money, all kinds of, like, I was like, just go. Just go. Just go be here. Like, I felt attachment to her, which is rare for these type of movies nowadays. Nowadays, you just want everyone to fucking die. But that's not the end. That's how the day keeps building upon itself and it keeps becoming more and more dramatic with more tension. It's just so poignant. And I think that Psycho is like one of those movies that's both art and horror. And it may not be as bloody as some other movies, but that shower scene, it can never not be effective in that movie. One, because of the way it's it's filmed, but also because of just the idea of it. Like, even I get creeped out being alone by myself in a shower because of that movie and even before i saw that movie that image is one that's always been in my mind because psycho is just that that way in the cultures in the cultural zeitgeist 
So it changes the way we shower, how we feel when we're in the shower. Like it makes you feel uncomfortable in places where you should feel comfortable. And that is just a sign of its brilliance even today. Race is something very complicated in horror movies. Um, it can it usually is not mentioned at all or it's done very 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 badly <laughs> and i think what makes Candyman so unique is that it's right there in the forefront the main heroine helen lyle is such an interesting character because through her and her thesis because that's why she's um going to the Cabrini Green projects and all that kind of stuff is to is to do this this thesis her doctorate thesis on folklore and she picks the candy man who um if you ever seen the movie the candy man is a was a slave who was an artist who fell in love with a white woman and so he was had his hand chopped off replaced with a hook and he was lathered in honey so that he would be you know stung to death by bees and then killed um and so the people in the Cabrini Green projects have sort of believed in him and he's manifested himself through them and so Helen goes to this place and tries to disprove the candy. She doesn't have faith. She doesn't believe in the candy man. And because of her lack of faith, because of her trying to deconstruct the candy man while these people believe in it, brings the candy man to life because he sees this and is like, well, since you're trying to tell them I don't exist, I have to show that I exist so that they believe in me again so he can have his true power and live on in folklore. And that to me is like, it's just, it's beautiful. I love folklore. That's what I, you know, studied in school as well for my own thesis I wrote about you know folklore and fairy tales and how it associates itself with race and so to see this movie which talks about all those different issues together just it stands out so well and it's also very well made you know Helen's a competent character yes she doesn't have faith and yes she kind of just kind of lowest lanes herself into situations but she's not stupid she's seeking knowledge and her seeking out knowledge and being destroyed because of it is more interesting to me than her just being like a bad person who just gets killed for no reason also what makes it really great is the final climactic scene where Helen and the Candyman are about to be killed by the community and Helen uses her final life to sort of save this young black baby and because of her action because of this she becomes a local legend and because she is a local legend she can go out and seek her revenge against the people who have wronged her so in being destroyed by this folklore she then becomes folklore and can act out her re revenge it's just it's it's such a great film because it's so much fun it has so much fun with lore and and fiction that i i love it the scene the opening sequence in halloween where you have michael myers and you're seeing the kill from his perspective and you see the little hand grab the knife and then you go upstairs and you see him just stabbing his sister. And then you finally have him walk down and he's unmasked and you see this little boy, this little boy, this little like blonde haired kid with this clown outfit holding this bloody knife. You have these great, great sequences that are just so iconic. And you all, and they're made with like no budget, no money, but they just have this, this artistic vision that they make this thing work with. And to me, that's what the opening sequence in Halloween is. It's, it's, it's this beautiful, like, dark image that, like, you as the audience are just kind of like, what the hell is going on? And as you see it unfold, you're kind of like, holy shit. And I think that Michael Myers is one of the best horror villains of all time, man. Like, he's not my favorite, but he's up there. Like, because of the idea that he's just pure evil. Always been always will be to the end of time interesting idea of like is he cursed is he is he just killing for the sake of killing like what is it about michael that makes him tick? and the fact that there are no answers but you have loomis who is just like just kill this dude and just let's get it over with and then he's unkillable like he just won't stop you know he, you can't kill michael he is just this entity of evil and darkness inside of him and i think that with laurie it's there's some tension there because you know that's the sibling but they never knew she never knew that that was her brother but i think in in halloween's four and five when you have jamie who i personally love and i'll talk about that in my next video with the my favorite horror female characters um this idea of like is it biological like could his niece inherit his evil 
they kind of fucked that up in six but we're not talking about that that movie there's something about michael about this boy who kills his sister in cold blood with a, a huge butcher knife for no reason that image is just so powerful in and of itself and the fact that you know it's been what like 10 movies later we still don't really know why he does it he's just evil and i think that it's the one instance of like unpalpable unquenchable thirst for darkness that i actually understand except because i feel like it's not i don't spend time like how do we explain you know, except for loomis that's what all loomis cares about is just finding time to figure out why J michael is michael but for us the audience we're not sitting there forever like looking at his childhood past wondering why he's crazy unlike some franchises who think that's a good way to do halloween even though it's not it's not he's evil because he's evil we don't have to go through a whole backstory it's not a little sense of oh he was beaten he was this he was beaten. no unfiltered dark roast evil <laughs> me right now because they're like Hellraiser 6 above Halloween I'm sorry not sorry I love Hellraiser I love the first two Hellraisers so so fucking much um where do I even begin Jesus um I love that the Cenobites are not the main villains in the first two they are actually some of the most interesting horror like monsters because they're not doing anything wrong. These people, like Frank and um, the doctor in the second movie, they are the ones who are seeking out the Cenobites. They're seeking out pleasure that they've never felt before because they're just so hedonistic that they need something else to take them to that next place so they can actually feel something again. And therefore, they are the ones who are trying to find, you know, some sort of release. And they awaken these Cenobites and they're like, you want pleasure? You want pain that you never felt before? we can give it to you and they are just giving you the drug that you want they're like drug dealers they're giving you the drug that you want to have and you pay for it with your soul and your body and every little piece of you that you can get and frank is the one who is the evil in this and then in the next movie it's julia who is an amazing big bad in, in hellraiser 2 she is great and the actress who plays her just doesn't get enough props for it she was great as julia in in both movies but Frank is the one who wants to really just kill people wantonly, just destroy people because he wants to exist in this world. The only way he can do is by taking other people's blood, other people's flesh. And I think the scene that made Hellraiser just like amazing to me and was made, like, I was like this watching it, is that scene where you see Frank come out from the floorboards back to life. Just like, you watch that scene just kind of like, like I was like I was like drooling with like oh my god it's so fucking amazing oh my god it's so yeah like it's 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 an amazing fucking scene and the entire movie just with like Julia taking these men and just slowly killing them and the corpse is hanging there and rotting and the and then when you go to the second movie because like Hellraiser one and two should be watched consecutively because they're like in the real world like a day apart because in the in the first movie is great because you have you know all these corpses there and all these people being dark and I think the second movie even takes that up another notch. You know, the scene where the guy's like cutting himself with the razor on the blood and then all of a sudden Julia's arms and legs just, uh, it's great. And the effect of like the, like the, the muscle and the tissue and just how wet and soft they look. It just, so good, so good. I love the movies. And then the second movie is even better because you get to see the world the Cenobites come from. You understand that the Cenobites, you know, like there's a scene where one girl, she's doing the puzzle. I forget her fucking name. Is it like Tiffany or something? And they sit about it's coming. They're about to like, you know, go to town. And Pinhead's like, hold up. She's not the one we want. And they're like, what? Like, we follow desire, not the body. These two movies to me are just like amazing. They're well made. They're fun. They just have this great gritty look to them. That's why I hate the sequels so much. The only decent one is the last 15 minutes of Hellraiser 6, which I only recommend because Kirsty returns in it. Because I think that Kirsty is just a great heroine. Like, she's a badass. She's like up there for me. She's amazing. So I think if you've never seen Hellraiser 1 and 2, watch it. You will be better for it. They are so much fun. <laughs> Okay, I know people are going to be mocking me for this, but I don't give a shit. This movie scared the shit out of me when I was a child, and it still 
makes me uncomfortable. And I think it makes me uncomfortable because the witches want to destroy every single child. Why? We don't know. And it's just like they're putting, like, I think like everything that they do in the movie is like almost a fate worse than death. Like the little girl that they put in the painting and her parents can see her in the painting just like getting old, dying. It just, I just watch it like that is the fucking worst. And I don't know any kid who could watch the scene with the Grand High Witch like removing her wig and her gloves and her skin. It shows kind of like this like this demon monster underneath which I just it's it's so fucking creepy and well made and gross and I think that because it's a kids movie people don't think of it as like being a real horror film but I think it is it has every single horror element that you need you have the you know the big bad you have the sympathetic leads you have you know people dying I mean and it's children I mean the, the plan of that these witches concoct is that they want to poison these chocolates to give to every single child that the, across the world because the Grand High Witch is the queen of all the witches overall right now they're in England but they're gonna give these this this chocolate to all the kids in England and then they're gonna turn into mice or rats whatever to be killed by their parents these parents are gonna be forced to kill their own children because you're just seeing these mice you don't know where the fuck they came from like I, what that is worse than any plan by almost any other like slasher killer ever. Like that is just so fucking dis like you're gonna have parents kill their own children by transferring into something that's disgusting and people want to kill. Like that's crazy. That's scary as shit. And I'm sorry. That's our plan that then Jason, Freddy, and Michael have combined. When I was growing up, the ghost face killer mask was the mask of Halloween. Like, I had no idea what the movie was about. I had seen the scary movie movies, you know, one and two, the best ones. So I knew a little bit about Scream, but all I really knew about it was that there was a girl named Cindy in it, and there was the ghost face killer. So I didn't really have, like, kind of any really big ideas of what it was until I finally watched it the entire series. And I watched it literally back. Every single night, I watched another Scream movie. Because I was just... I was hooked. I love them. And I love Sydney. And I love the reoccurring cast. Like, Sydney is great, but like, Gail Weathers? Head bitch. Like, I, I love that this is a universe that has continuing reoccurring characters because so many times they just get automatically killed off. And while there is a really good death count, and I think each of the movies, I think that they really do keep some of the best core people. It's so well made. And it's so self-referential that it can keep evolving into something much more each time even though I think three is the weakest in the series because it it took itself a little bit too far into it them making a movie like that it got a little bit too meta like new nightmare territory it was just kind of like oh mm, girl no but at the same time I think because you have the strong cast and I think that you know Neve Campbell like as Sydney if she's not in it, I wouldn't give a shit about the series anymore because her character evolution is so key to what makes Scream interesting. I, I love her and I and I can't imagine the series without her or without Gail and Dewey. Like, I, I just can't imagine it. They're just so integral to the cast and I think that the fact that the Ghostface killer is human and capable of just such barbarity is also great because they're not like, you know, Jason or Freddy who's got like some real emotional fucking baggage or like you know pedophiles or whatever they're just fucking crazy fucking people putting on masks killing people and doing it based on horror movies and doing it for petty reasons just to torment this girl because they can and they feel entitled to to do so and I think that's really great I just think that like Scream is one of the best horror movies of all time <laughs> Most people who are fans of horror know that this is one of, probably one of the first like slasher movies. This and Halloween are like the two that created the slasher genre. And in my opinion, I like Black Christmas more than Halloween. Unpopular, I know, I can see the thumbs up now, but I like Black Christmas more than Halloween. I'm gonna say so. Um, I love it because not only is it having like a great cast, but all the kills are like <clears throat> I can't even deal like the first kill with the with the plastic bag over in the girl's neck and her just slowly sucking and you can just see her mouth making those motions and I that she's never fucking found that the ending shot of the movie is her in a rocking chair plastic still in her mouth 
just sitting there. And then you... It's just so fucking scream scary. Like, and it, and it does everything so right. Like, you have really, like, likable characters. You have Jess, who's played by Olivia Hussey, and she's amazing. And I think that's what's interesting about this movie is that, like, one of the comments in the she wants to have an abortion. And just, like, I remember watching, like, they have an abortion subplot in Black Christmas, and she's not gonna die? Like, that to me is just revolutionary in itself. Because, you know, once you have sex in a horror movie, you are like, bitch, you going to die. But if you want to have an abortion and you're not just gonna be killed off, like, that to me was just kind of, like, blew my fucking mind. But it's just, all the kills are well done. The tension just builds so well. Why all the girls don't just fucking leave is beyond me. But we all have to make these kind of conceits for these kind of movies. But I think the best part to me is that the killer, we don't know who the fuck he is in the end. Like, there were hints of it being Peter, but it wasn't Peter. Because at the end, you hear the person be like, Agnes, it's me, Billy. And I'm just like, Ugh. It's funny because I there's a girl I know whose name is Agnes and I was like Agnes it's me Bailey like she looks at me like what the fuck am I talking about I'm just kind of like what the fuck though you know know about Black Christmas like you're the one who's crazy not me but Black Christmas is just if you love those things about Halloween like that slow build the tension between like the killers and stuff like then you love Black Christmas like Black Christmas is in my opinion you know one of the best of its kind and it does the first it's coming from inside the house you know lines as well so I think that it has everything that you love and will eventually love that come into horror movies some people might think it's too slow I don't think so at all I think that it's it's perfect and I love that there's no face to the killer it's just this person who is in their attic slowly killing them and they don't fucking know what the hell's going on it's just it's so well done. The remake is a piece of horse shit. I hate it. 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 I hate it more than I hate the Halloween remakes because at least those have something going on there. That fucking remake was a piece of shit. <laughs> Stephen King is really good, in my opinion, at bringing up the fact that there are evils in humanity that are just as bad as the evils in the supernatural. And I think Carrie is probably the best example of this because you have these people who are just so cruel to this fucking girl who is whose biggest crime is that she's pathetic. I mean, at least Space expels that so well. Like, she looks fucking pathetic. And they pick on her, they berate her, they tease her. She has a mother who's just so fanatic about her religion and about her own sexual guilt that she just, you know, destroys her daughter emotionally. That's evil. Carrie's powers are just something that happens, but that evil, that wickedness, was already there before any kind of psychic powers even got about. And I think that De Palma does a really good job of showing all of these scenes. And I think with example of one scene, this movie is perfect in terms of being harmony. Like everything just builds up to each other just so wonderfully. And I think that Sissy Spacek is the only Carrie that matters. Like I'm sorry, the Carrie remake with Chloe Moritz, you're too fucking pretty. Sorry, no one's gonna believe that you're like pathetic nerd. No, nothing doesn't sell me at all. Especially because the girl that Pippa picks on her, the girl that they picked to play on the head girl, isn't even as cute as Glory Moritz. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? It was just so ridiculous. Like, what makes Carrie good is not just blood, it's not just gore, it's everything. You have to sell this horrible situation that she has, you have to sell her patheticness, you have to sell how distraught she is, you have to sell the fact that these kids should be killed. Even though they didn't do anything wrong, like all these people aren't evil. Well, even sells their culpability that they also let Carrie be harassed and mistreated in school. You have to sell that. You have to sell that she said that people would make fun of that badly, that she would be this kind of person. And I mean, they don't want to actually go for it and make Carrie be fat and pimply like she was in the movie because they're just not going that way. But they failed to do that in the remake. But in the original, even though this basic is like very skinny and is pretty in real life, they sell her as that and so when she finally kills all those kids you're like sorry guys but upon yourself you know i'm pretty sure most people their number one movie would be Texas Chainsaw massacre but mine sorry is a nightmare on elm street i love freddy krueger when i was younger i was not 
okay with horror movies. I got scared watching episodes of the X-Files and Buffy. Like, Hush scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. But once I hit, like, to become a teenager, I really got into horror and learned to love the movies that I love today. However, I've always kind of been into Freddy Krueger. Like, it's the mixture of, like, his, 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 his weapon of, like, those long knife nails and his Mr. Rogers sweater and his douche fedora cap. And the fact that he has a personality that he's charming, he's kind of like entertaining. Like, you know, he's like a, like a stand-up comic while he's killing you. So when I finally watched A Nightmare on Elm Street, like, I was blown away because in early Kruger movies, he's not as funny, but the humor is still there. I think it gets upped up a thousand as it continues because Robert Englund is just so great at that role. But to me, Freddy's humor is a part of what makes him so charismatic. And I think that... I enjoy the first movie the best and it's one of my favorites because Wes Craven, I know that people are kind of hit or miss about like how great was he at creating, you know, horror movies and all the kind of stuff like does he really deserve all the credit he gets as being a master of horror. For me personally, he does because this movie is one of the scariest concepts to me. Like, you know, Crystal Lake, don't fucking go to the lake. You know, Michael Myers, I'm not related to him, not a problem. You know, for most of these horror movies, you do something to get yourself put into that situation that's your own business. You know, that's your own dumb, you know, fault. With Freddy, he was always a predator. You know, he preyed on these children when they were, like, as a pedophile when they were alive, when he was alive. Then he's killed by the parents, which I think is another whole thing about how, you know, people got divorced, got alcoholism because of it. Like, that is also a great backstory in and of itself. But then he's also now taking revenge on all these kids that he already victimized once. Victimizing them again. And they can't run away. Because they have to sleep. He comes in their dreams, their daydreams, their nightmares, and he just comes and he can kill them. And how many times have one of us woken up from our dreams where we almost are just kind of like clutching our chest, kind of like, like you feel like you just, you felt like you were dying and you're just so happy to just be awake. And I think that A Nightmare on Elm Street just wraps that fear up in this bow and puts it there because I think that that is probably one of the scariest things to me like like I said you can avoid Jason you can vet Michael like Freddy if he wants to get you he can get you A Nightmare on Elm Street while it may not be perfect in every single way everything that it, it brought to the horror genre changed it for the better I think it made a better heroines I think it made a better villain I think that Freddy really shook up the world the horror world in a great way and I think that you know, we wouldn't have Scream, we wouldn't have all the other great movies if it wasn't for Freddy Krueger because one, you know, Wes Craven wouldn't have had the money, all that kind of stuff. But I just feel like of all the horror icons that we have, Freddy is the best one. And he has the best power, he has the best outfit, everything. Like, Freddy Krueger's number one in my book. So that's why I love A Nightmare on Elm Street. I think it's the best of the best of the best, sir.